The hominids were getting picked off left, right, and center. But with Sediva, there's no evidence that a carnivore had anything to do with it. So then it's, well, what could have happened? Nothing has modified these things. No carnivore, no cut marks, no anything else. It's the breakage patterns that are the secret here. The boy has two broken arms. What we're seeing are bilateral breaks on the boy, which are happening just on the humerus, on the upper arm. And it would be like that, and so the breakages are very high towards the head of the humerus, and it's a breakage on both sides. You might get one broken, but two is very unusual. These bones were broken when he was either alive or fresh. Fits very nicely with this. You can see these splayed, uneven edges, and that is the result of fresh breakage. The fact that it's happening on his forelimbs is a clear indicator that he was putting his arms out to break the fall. It's characteristic of a very long, hard fall, one of tens of meters, not just a few. At the moment, the cave in which Sediba was found is not a cave. It's no longer a cave. It's just a little hole in the ground. But a couple of million years ago, when Sediba was roaming the landscape, it was probably quite a deep cave, which is incredibly important in understanding how all of this fits together. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Isn't that, isn't that kind of strange? There must be an attractant. There must be something that's drawing them to this death trap. The only thing in my mind if that unifies all these animals to take life or death risk is water. We, as modern humans, are so immune to what it is to go without drinking. If I put someone on a 30 meter tall pole, that's 100 odd feet, with all the food they can eat, and one glass of water at the base. 48 hours, maybe 72. And I'd find them at the bottom, dead, probably. Because they would come down.